Hello and welcome back to my studio. Well, in this video, I'm going to give you a fully extended painting demonstration of a beautiful landscape scene. It has old houses, trees, shadows, lots of light. And I'm going to give you some important tips as well to simplify a scene like this and get a good light filled impression. And there's another good reason I'm doing this video for you today. So I'll tell you about that after the break. Okay, now, as I've said, there's a good reason for this video, and it is to say thank you to you if you've subscribed to this channel. You may have noticed we've gone over 50,000 subscribers, and that is quite a mind-boggling number for me. And of course, it's all thanks to you, the subscribers who come along to watch my painting videos. So I'm going to do an extended video for you today as a token of my appreciation. And of course, there'll be many more coming in the future. So if you haven't subscribed, add yourself to this growing family of art fans and enthusiasts. We're all going to help each other to grow over the forthcoming years. All right, this painting is one of the beautiful Cape scenes that I love so much in South Africa. Lots of light, shadows, interesting shapes, and a very uh, nostalgic feeling for me anyway, uh, painting scenes like this. And that's a, a tip I can give you right away is try to paint scenes that you bond with and evoke something for you. Uh, an emotional connection always makes for a better painting. Now there's one more thing I want to add before we start with the painting, and that is that what you're about to see today is very similar to what I do each month with my group called the Artists Live Channel. We get together for a live demonstration once a month where I go through a lesson, give some pointers and tips, and then dive into a painting demonstration. And sometimes I already don't know what I'm going to get at the other side, but it's always fun to see the end result. Sometimes I'm quite surprised myself. And then there's the HD recording, which I upload, so you can watch that again as well. Reference photos that I provide as well, you can download, try out the painting for yourself. And in the channel, there are many past videos as well that you can watch anytime. Just dive in anywhere you want. The subjects are all different. It's not a course. It's more about keeping up with your painting and giving yourself a challenge each month. It's about keeping us always working on our paintings and that's the great part. And I also do critiques of the paintings that you send in as well. So there is that too. So if you want to find out more about the Artist Life channel, pop along to my art school online and check it out. You'll see it is one of the greatest bargains on the internet as well in my opinion. All right, without uh, more time wasting, let's get into the painting demonstration. This is the main reference with the cottage and the trees that I want to paint in this scene. But I also want to add a road on the right hand side to take the eye into the scene as well. So practice and prepare with a couple of composition sketches. You're using pencil for a quick thumbnail sketch just to explore. The addition of the road on the right hand side, heading to a figure down in the road there as well. The trees are going to be important and of course getting some shadows in there, working out the shadow patterns. I want the light coming from right to left and the shadows will follow that pattern as well. A nice big shadow in the foreground to take the eye in, and then shadows uh, spaced alternately. Shadows side on the tree as well will bring in some nice color variation between the warm and cool colors. So that's a pretty simple now no tan sketch just to reinforce the large mass shapes. The the darks and middle values, and of course the paper forming the lightest value. So relatively straightforward as well, with the dark mass shape of the shadow and the foreground, and then the middle value 
shapes. This is a marker pen, a number five gray, which is basically your middle value on the value scale. There'll be a wall as well, taking the eye in on the left hand side. And here I'm adding where I intend to place the figure. And there's some water channels on the, the left there. So pretty much sorted out that composition. But just to reinforce things a bit more, I'm going to draw out the composition very quickly and roughly using a rigger brush and some ultramarine and perhaps a bit of burnt sienna. Just soften the paint with a little spirits to make this a bit simpler. Now I don't always draw out a composition like this on the canvas. If I've got it worked out in my thumbnail sketches, I might go straight in with the big brush and just block in the darks and lights and middle values. But I think this will illustrate things a little easier as well for some of you, just to see it unfolding. And of course, there's nothing wrong with drawing out the main composition like this. The trees, there's some really interesting shapes and I encourage you to make your tree shapes as interesting and varied as possible. Don't do a straight up and down pine tree like a ut utility pole. You want trees that have interesting curves and branches and make them look unusual if, if they're not like that already. You'll have to improvise, otherwise, if your trees look pretty interesting, as these do in the reference, they should look good in your painting. And here's the, the road with the, the shadow in the foreground, and you can see how the shadow gets to the, the pavement area and then goes up over the pavement. So. Don't make it just one straight line all the way. I'm using oils with my typical palette of colors, a range of warm and cool primary colors. Now look at the light direction. I'm actually making the light more of a right to left. And uh, that's bathing the, the end of this building in some warm light. I'm using a bit of yellow and titanium white to get that warm light. In the reference, the end of the building is not in direct sunlight. And I just feel that I want a bit more punch. So hence the, the direct light on there. Now I've made a, a gray with orange and cerulean and white, which I'm going to use to throw a few shadows across the light side of this building because I think with the light coming from right to left and the trees in between there's definitely going to be some shadows and it'll make a nice uh, feature I think and just a bit of variety on that building. Just neaten things up. Of course this is the block-in stage. You are will of course come back in after the block in and add your second or third layers, especially in the lights, get in some impastos as well. But the block in stage is really a, 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 such a fun stage as well, where you can test out a few things as well, um, improvise just a little, suss out a color, is it going to work? Do you need to change it? You can't get every aspect of the painting planned out as if you're yeah, constructing a building. That's a, it's a little too uh, set in its ways. You've got a pretty good idea of how you, you want the painting to go, but you will mix colors as you go and you'll improvise here or there. And as you see the color go down on the canvas, you will either like it or you won't be so sure about it and then you'll make some changes. Yeah, I'm putting in the, the shadows of the trees. 
and uh, just is that uh, water furrows as well where in some villages in the Cape they still let water run down at certain times of the day for you to water your garden and these furrows make some nice uh, compositional elements as well to take the eye in and along. Oh, there's the roof. I'm going to make a fairly strong green. And uh, that's also a little bit of improvisation with color because there'll be lots of reddish burnt siennas coming into the tree shapes. And of course, the greens will be a nice complement to those colors. If you're not sure of what colors to use in a painting, Think of complementary colors. If the color you're putting down is a reddish color, where can you bring in some greens? If it's yellow, where can you bring in some violet? That will help you get a more dynamic and vibrant color scheme to your painting. Make your shadows interesting as well. These trees I will usually come back in and throw in some unusual shadow colors bruise greens violets all can help make the shadows interesting now I'm, I'm guided by the the reference but i will not have to follow every branch and and twig directly as long as I'm getting the essence of the scene I'm generally happy with that remember as a landscape painter it's not your job to document a landscape in perfect accuracy your job is to compose it in a form that makes a pleasing painting so that could mean moving trees around changing the number of the trees and so on. So you, you can make these changes. In fact, you have to in many cases. So I'll need some cool shadow greens in the foreground. The, a strong big shadow like this is not in the reference. And there again, I'm using a big foreground shadow as a kind of a welcome mat for the eye to move over and into the body of the painting. That's a fairly well used device for good reason because it works. And uh, some roadside colors, also cool colors. And now working on the dappled light areas, you can see starting to bring in some bright yellow greens, some greenish shadows at the base of the trees and now a strong contrast as we get into the light with these light yellows so in my style of painting i like to push the colors but keep shapes simplified even relatively abstract compared to what may be in the reference. The idea is to make an interesting painting. This blue violet in the foreground across the road. I might just have to darken that a bit more, but just put in your put in your colors. And I work fairly quickly. So that's important as well. I do really believe that quick working impressionist painters get those uh, unplanned results. A few happy accidents as well. And um, spontaneous little developments which just make the painting perhaps a little quirky. fact is I hope for a lot of uh, interesting 
shapes and colors during the painting. And uh, then it, then we see how it works out and we adapt, we can change. Very easy to make some simple changes to a painting, so don't worry about it getting too uh, or out of control. I would say don't don't worry about that. It really isn't. You can even come back the next day, have a break, and just think about it. Come back the next day, and you're almost guaranteed you'll have the solution at your fingertips. So in the distant shadows or middle distance, I'm putting in these blue notes. Oh, this what I'm doing right now is in fact the, the wall that extends along the, the side of the road. As the trees and other objects recede into the distance, I make them a lot looser. Let the viewer explore those things and see what what they see, but might be something that stimulates the imagination. But generally you can figure out everything that's going on within the context of the scene, garden walls, fence posts, all that all that stuff. But you don't have to paint every single thing. You don't have to put in post boxes and every little a street lamp that's in the road. You can select, you can pick what you want, leave certain things out. Don't put in stuff just for the sake of it. You wanted to add something to the scene. So I'm more interested in keeping the issues of light and values. Those are very important. Values carry the painting. Color gets some of the credit. And if you cover both bases, you should have a, a pretty good result. Softer, cooler colors out in the distance. Don't make the value contrast too strong in the distance and desaturate your colors. You may just need to add a bit of white. To desaturate it, you might have to add a complementary color to really knock down a vibrant color a bit as well. Adding in some of the highlights with lemon yellow and some white. These are all oak trees for the most part and uh, in springtime, so some vibrant greens and yellow greens. Extending the shadows over the, the pavement areas of the, the road as well. So you've got to remember cool green for those shadow colors. Now the lights in the road, which is just pretty much a warm white, isn't it? A little bit of uh, orange and yellow and titanium white. As long as it's warm, that's especially in the foreground. Going to get in some dappled light here as well with some thicker paint. I think that breaks up the, the shadow quite nicely. Now the furrows along the side, the water furrows. Adding a dynamic diagonal line, which takes the eye in pretty quickly. Now I've left the sky blank, but I've got to start blocking in sky colors. So there's pretty much not too much blank area for the sky. A lot of it's going to have to be cutting in amongst the, the trees. And uh, then re-establishing some of the tree shapes because you'll lose some of those. 
So this is mostly just cerulean and white. Trying to make the shapes big and put on a lot of paint on the brush so you don't have to keep brushing away. Just put on one brush stroke and that should be enough. Warming the sky color up with a little touch of lemon yellow into that blue. Now a few more sky holes, a little brighter. I'm working on quite a small surface as you can tell, more or less a 6 by 8 or inch um, surface. I'm painting on Archer's paper for oils. Really wonderful painting surface for demonstrations like this. Warming up the lights on the, the trees with a touch of red and orange. Dragging on some nice thick paint in an impasto style. Using a number six bristle brush to keep shapes relatively large. Although later on I will swap to a rigger to create one of the one or two of the details. Finishing details. Getting in some really nice orange and uh, warm burnt siennas. In the light areas, make your paint nice and thick. In the cool areas, it can be a bit thinner. Look at this lovely violet shades in the, the shadows. Uh, so I'm, I'm responding well to that. I like that color. I'm going to bring more of it into the painting. Suggesting some branches that are in shadow. So I'll make them blue or a blue violet. And they make a nice contrast with all the warm reddish and orange colors of the trees. So as you can tell, contrast between warm and cool color and contrast between light and dark. Well, I think that's pretty much an entire painting's consideration other than composition. It's those two elements of value and color temperature. Edges as well though are important, so I want edges in the distance to be softer. So even though it's a small scale painting, uh, there are many important considerations you've got to bring into every painting. Here I'm adding more variety into those shadows to make them richer. But uh, still keeping them as shadows, all the values still remain a shadow value. Boosting these lights a bit more, also tidying up a few areas where I need to. So we need a little more color in the distant area there. There's a bit of a mountain showing at the end of the road. What I'm painting now is, is really a case of testing and seeing if I like the look of it. Um, it's very difficult to, uh, to follow the reference in great detail at this point. So you are the designer of your painting and you continue to design the painting right to the very end, putting a bright color in where you want to throw a bit of light or break up a shape a bit more. Soften this edge there. Also refine shapes. Look at your tree shapes. Make sure they, the tree trunks start off thicker at the ground and become thinner as they go up. Very easy to forget these basic things, and I've done it myself. As you get caught up in a painting, you forget some basic 
uh, geometry of trees and other objects. Perspective as well must be more or less accurate or read accurately as far as the line of the buildings, the walls, etc. heading towards the vanishing point in the, on the horizon. So now I'm looking for these highlights, I'm looking for the sparks of Box of warm color here or there, suggesting the leaves and the trees, but not trying to paint all of them. I'm going to obviously leave out a lot of that information. I can't fit all of it in. Just as long as you get the impression of a bright and sp uh, sparkling spring day. See, I'm just warming up the color of the mountain showing through in the distance, cleaning that color up. More or less a desaturated pink. Softening up those values as well. They're a little too strong, a little too dark out in the distance there. So pushing that area back and that's giving us a little more space. Now the rigger brush, as I mentioned earlier, brought that out to get some final shapes and a few details. Sometimes you have to use the rigger in the final stages to get those smaller shapes. But don't overdo it. Don't put in too many highlights either. So I'm Got the impression of a fairly busy, um, busy area with with these trees, which is more or less true to the the reference, but still somewhat stylized. I can't capture all those details, and I don't want to. Now I'm seeing where I can drop in a few um, highlights, something on the top of the wall there. Perhaps a few little spots to bring things to life. Once again, you can only do a few of these. If you overdo it, it can look like uh, the confetti flying around at a wedding. You don't want that. And then, of course, a few darker accents. Drop a few of those in. Put in the figure. And then I think we're pretty much done. Keeping this simple, just a bit of burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. One leg longer than the other, so it looks like he's walking. A highlight on the side where the sun's coming from. Neaten up the, the shadows there. And uh, I tend to fiddle a little bit sometimes, so you can always come back in and just make that final change to your figure. But it should work. All right, so let's get the, the tape off. Have a final look. Just assess the, the scene, make any last changes. Sign it off. But of course, there's always one more thing to touch up. And I just want to boost that focal point tree a little more. And that's it. Well, I hope you enjoyed that demo and found a few useful tips you can apply to your own painting. That's the whole idea. I want to inspire you to try out a painting for yourself. Find any subject you love and paint using some of these tips. And always try to go for that light effect. We want a painting with light. And tell me about your experience. Leave a comment on this video. Did you enjoy it? Did you learn something new? And also remember, check out the Artist Live channel if you would like to join me for videos like this live and recorded every month. Okay, if you haven't subscribed as well, please do so now. Remember, this video is a thank you for helping me to reach 50,000 plus subscribers. 
and that's something I'm truly grateful for. So thank you very much for that. All right, enjoy your painting and until next time, cheers for now. Mm -hmm.